Well, greetings everyone and welcome to another edition of Movie Goodness where we examine life through cinema here on the KB Radio Network. I am your humbled, gracious host, Kevin Reed, and welcome to a very special episode of Movie Goodness. Um, This isn't your normal Movie Goodness episode where we take a subject. Uh, whether it's a current event, historical event, uh, social issue, social justice, whatever issue, and review a movie that is related to said issue. Now, today we're going to uh, uh, kind of pivot and do a little special episode. Being as though today, uh, well, at least the time of this uh, episode's release, uh, in theaters, we're getting the release of Jurassic World Dominion, which is uh, supposedly the last Jurassic Park slash world film of the franchise. This is supposed to be the conclusion of all six, uh, this being the sixth film. And I wanted to go over all the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park movies i am a fan of this franchise even though this franchise is not a fan of me (laughs) and i mean that it kind of started off as this phenomenon that took place in 1993 and from that moment on it just went down uh the quality of film should i say and I have not enjoyed a Jurassic film. I'm just going to say Jurassic. Uh, since the first one. It, well, that's not fair. That's not fair. And it's not true. Because I have enjoyed, uh, 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 I would say, three out of the five that I've seen. Uh, which is a good average. But that's not saying much. Because enjoy and me feeling it is a good film or two different things i've enjoyed some bad movies <laughs> but that doesn't mean that it's in the upper echelons of uh, uh top 100 films in my catalog I, I i just enjoy it you know uh movies that embrace the stupidity of the concept or embrace the campiness of its subject uh i can enjoy it even though the films aren't all that good and for the most part Jurassic World yeah and I'm saying world those films uh, I don't know it just didn't live up to the hype of Jurassic Park even though I did like Jurassic World I really did enjoy it uh, but it just didn't have that same oomph as Jurassic Park But before I go into the films, and we're going to go through each of the five previous films because I can't talk about Dominion because I haven't seen it yet. (laughs) I plan to see it this weekend, and I will have a separate review for that film. But I've seen all the other installments in this franchise, and we're going to rank them. We're going to rank them one through five and uh, give a brief review of all five films films uh but before we get to that portion of the show let me give you a little history about the lead up to this just worldwide phenomenon that was jurassic park in 1993 now you have to put things in perspective here because in 1993 uh young kevin reed was 14 years old and this was a time when, you know, when you're a kid, at least boys, you know, young boys, they, they, uh, very into dinosaurs and space and, you know, science fiction stuff like that. But even though dinosaurs are real, but you know, you get where I'm coming from here. You know, you, you was into stupid stuff like that when you was a kid and, you know, a movie coming out about dinosaurs. All right, fine. You know, but around that time, just before the the big boom of CG, the big boom of digital created in, images and stuff like that. So 
it wasn't expected to look as good as it looked. And I'm going to touch in more on it when we review Jurassic Park from 1993. But to see those dinosaurs in live action like that was just mind blowing. It just took me into another world, took me into another place. And especially when it came to uh, uh, CGI in film, because I'm like, well, if they can do this, they can do anything. And for the most part, they have for better or for worse. Um, everybody who regularly listens to the show knows that I am a huge fan of practical effects. If you could do things practically in camera work without the use of computer generated images, you have me. You have me hooked because a lot of work and effort goes into that. And it looks better, actually. Um now I understand you couldn't have real dinosaurs running around and so <laughs> you know uh, you needed something and like I said I'm going to get into the history of it and what all took place when we review Jurassic Park but you you can pretty much decipher from what I'm trying to tiptoe around before I spoil everything <laughs> in my review I I I absolutely love that first one, but let's not prolong the time. We got five movies to review here, so (laughs) let's go through the list, and I'm going to go from worst to first, and um, I can't express, coming in at number five, I cannot express the level of disappointment I had with this installment in the franchise, and it just so happened to be the last one. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That movie was horrible. I mean, it was so bad. So, so bad. And I, I, it's rare that I watch a film and get angry. I mean, get angry to the point I wanted to find the filmmakers and not beat them up or nothing, but really give them a good tongue lashing. Um, (laughs) <laughs> this was just bad. I, I, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what was the point of that movie. It made no sense. And I've, I've watched it one and a half times. And I know that sounds crazy. But I watched it once and got mad. And I tried to watch it again so I can get maybe, maybe a, a better view of it. And it didn't it didn't work i i got halfway through and i said i, I can't do this I, <laughs> I can't do it and i haven't returned since i i honestly hate this movie uh jurassic world fallen kingdom is a 2018 american science fiction action film and is the sequel to jurassic world uh it is directed by j.a barona and it is the second installment in the Jurassic World trilogy and the fifth overall installment in the Jurassic Park franchise. Um, the story, well, I ain't even going to get into the story, but the because it, it don't make sense. This is a betrayal of everything that was established starting back in 1993. That's how horrible of a film this is. And it, yeah, I'm going to spoil it because who cares? They had a clone. Now, if you don't know how the dinosaurs came to be, uh, if you've never seen a Jurassic Park movie or a Jurassic World movie, I, d- I don't understand. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand why you listen to this show. I mean, this is movies. This is what movies is about. Um, th- this, this, this came about when... They cloned dinosaurs, right? They cloned them from finding dino DNA from fossilized mosquitoes and things of that nature. So that's how they was able to clone these dinosaurs and have them run amok. And so in this film, I guess you can say the twist in this film is that the guy that was working with uh, 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 Hammond from the first films 
he cloned his daughter um, using the same technology as the they use for the dinosaurs, and that's why him, the the two butt head butted heads, and uh, went their separate ways, and blah blah blah. This that and the third, it was just convoluted. It was just it made zero sense, and I did not feel it fit in a movie about dinosaurs. Why are we? <laughs> Why are we exploring a plot about a man cloning his daughter who died, you know, in this movie? This is after the dinosaurs have, have basically broken out of the park and they're running wild, you know, <laughs> in the world. And this is what we're focusing on. The movie was horrible. Then you had a dinosaur chasing our uh, uh, protagonist. Portrayed by uh, 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 Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, to have them running around a house or a mansion, running from a dinosaur. This inside the house. I, I, <laughs> this movie was bad. I I, I don't even want to talk about it no more. Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom gets a letter grade of a D plus, and the only reason I don't give it an F. Is because there are a couple of scenes. There, couple. There's one scene in this movie that was outstanding. And it was at the very beginning of this film. And that's when the island, when the volcano erupted on the island and all the dinosaurs were uh, uh, trying to escape the island as the volcano was uh, erupting. And that was an amazing scene. Um. And for it to end, the way it ended was just sad. Uh, you see the, I want to say Barakarosaurus. I, I, I don't know all the dinosaurs, Dave. But uh, you see the ash cloud, but you see the silhouette of it uh, on the island. Basically, and it's wailing. Like, it knows it's about to die. It is like, oh my God, this is heartbreaking. I mean, that, that was, it was an awesome scene. And... From that point on, the movie went straight to the toilet. I mean, straight to the toilet. Yes, it was bad. D plus, D plus. I, I, I don't even know. I mean, it just, it just featured. It had some of the worst performances in the entire series. And I'm talking about the all five films thus far. It was just bad. And and Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. Are talented actors, but they were giving given absolutely nothing to work with, nothing. I don't know, I don't know. It, it, it look, it would have been entertaining if it had embraced, uh, you know, its ridiculous premise. You know, if if it would have leaned into the camp, and you know, just celebrated like I was talking about earlier, movies that know that is ridiculous and just lean into it. You can enjoy it. You couldn't even do that. It this movie had the audacity to try to take itself seriously. It, it was it's it, it's horrible. It was horrible. D plus. D plus. All right, let's move on to our number four Jurassic film. And coming in at number four is a movie when it came out, I was excited. Of course, you know, um, because it was a new aspect to the Jurassic Park films, you know, uh, we were getting Triceratops. I think that's what they are. You know, the flying dinosaurs. And that was heavily featured in the, in, in the promotion going into this film. And um, they were teased in the first two films. And then in, in part three, we finally got them. And coming in at number four is Jurassic Park three. And um, like I said, it, it, it was teased that we was going to get the Triceratops. I think that's what I'm I think that's what they are. Uh, the names of them. I'm I'm not I'm not you know I'm not a, a paleontologist and I don't even know if I'm saying that right. So I don't know if uh, if I'm saying the right names for these dinosaurs, but the flying dinosaurs. But uh, 
when it came out, I enjoyed it. I really did. I I, I enjoyed this installment of the film. Uh, um, Jurassic Park 3 is a 2001 American science fiction action film. It is the third installment in the Jurassic Park franchise in the final film of the original Jurassic Park trilogy. Um, the film stars returning from uh, the original. We have Sam Neill, William H. Macy, Taylor Leone, uh, Trevor Morgan, and Michael Jeter. Uh, this film is directed by Joe Johnson. And Joe Johnson is an exceptional director. This is the first time that we had a different director from the originals. We know the first two films were directed by the great Steven Spielberg. And uh, Joe Johnson took over for him um, in the directing chair. And I, right off the bat, I was upset by that when I found that out uh, before the film came out. I was, you know, I'm a huge Spielberg fan, so... When he stepped away from it, I immediately had pause. <laughs> I immediately was like, oh, no. But Joe Johnson, I like his films. Uh, he, Honey, I Shrunk the Kid. Uh, um, 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 Lord, why am I blanking on it? The one with the rocket. The Rocketeer. <laughs> the one with the rocket. Yeah, the, the, the Rocketeer. I enjoyed that. Uh, he also directed later on. He directed uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, um, and so on and so forth. He, he's made some real good films that I've enjoyed. Uh, so I felt this was kind of up his alley, and I think he did a decent job. Is it as good as the originals? Well, obviously not in my ranking. It, it ranks at number four, but I enjoyed it. Um, to have Sam Neill come back was good, but... The way he came back was kind of silly. Uh, there was, it was just some, it was some real bad plot devices in this movie that just did not logically make a lot of sense. And but we are talking about a movie with dinosaurs in it, so you got to kind of su suspend disbelief. Um, <laughs> now, this is the first film. You know, unlike the first two films of the uh, original trilogy, uh, Jurassic Park 3 is not based on one of Michael Crichton's novels. The first two were ba based on the novels. Uh, and it had a chaotic production. Uh, and it made it even more challenging for Johnson to live up to the previous films. Uh, a lot of things went on behind the scenes that, you know, just derailed this movie from the start. Uh, but... Uh, to say that they made chicken salad out of chicken, you know what? I think that's an accomplishment within itself. It, it was so bad to the point that Joe Johnson swore off directing films after this. It, he had a horrible experience making this movie. Uh, even though he did later on go on to direct uh, Captain America and the first Avenger, which was pretty awesome. Um, now, as I said before, Jurassic Park 3 brought back Dr. Alan Grant, uh, played masterfully by Sam Neill in the previous, in, well, in the first film. He wasn't in the second one, uh, who had been absent, like I said, from Lost World. Uh, Neill's performance is easily the best part of this film. Uh, it's, uh, Grant isn't looking to take advantage of the situation. He's only uh, agreeing to do this to give... William H. Macy's character and uh, Tay Leone's character um, an illegal tour of the island where the dinosaurs are when they offer to fund his research uh, but they had some not sinister I was about to say uh, but different motives behind it uh, their son was lost on the island so they thought that Alan Grant could you know guide them through this island with these dinosaurs to find a son being as though he went through this before but this was a different island than the jurassic park <laughs> so uh they were in a messed up situation um unfortunately uh it it, 
it didn't work. That little twist. Then we come to find out that uh, uh, Sam Neill's character and Laura Dern, who have a cameo from, yeah, and Laura Dern is from the first film as well. They didn't. They weren't together. Uh, she was married with kids with another gentleman, and Alan Grant was just living his life. You know, looked sad and broken down. I didn't like that part of it, and it it just didn't. It, it that part upset me. I didn't like that. Um, Jurassic Park three, at least it embraced the campiness, unlike Fallen Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the battle between the 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 uh, the two dinosaurs was a great action sequence when the plane crashed. That was an awesome action sequence. Uh, if you ignore the human characters altogether. Um, Jurassic Park 3 I guess could be a suitable B level movie but uh <laughs> you know cause some of those characters just did not work um like I said the only redeemable character is Sam Neill's uh, uh, uh Dr. Alan Grant that's the only character worth anything in this movie I you know sadly you have to have humans in it <laughs> so <laughs> that's it. There you have it. But that it was just bad. I didn't. I did not like the performances. And just like Fallen Kingdom, when I said that, uh, you know, you had talented actors who had nothing to work with. These were talented actors in this film. Uh, William H Macy, uh, uh, Taylor Only, all these, all these people I'm t- talking about are very talented. They had nothing to work with, but it is still watchable um <laughs> so i'm giving jurassic park 3 a letter grade of a c minus uh it is it, is watchable there's nothing that i would run out to see you know if it was on tv or something and it was nothing else on i'll watch it but as far as me sitting down like oh i want to watch jurassic park 3 that's never gonna happen <laughs> so uh it's is watchable i'll say that much so Ranking in at number four, Jurassic Park 3. Uh, speaking of three, our number three on in our ranking is a film that I had a lot of high hopes for, and it did get ranked up there. Um, it fell at number three for me, and it is completely enjoyable, I must say. Uh... Got a soft spot for it for the simple fact it was filmed down here in New Orleans. Yes, a Jurassic Park film was filmed in the New Orleans area. And coming in at number three is Jurassic World. Jurassic World, uh, which was made in 2015, is the introduction into this new trilogy. But it still managed to be faithful to the original trilogy and that that impressed me so much um this is the fourth installment in the jurassic park franchise in the first in the jurassic world trilogy it is directed by clint uh colin trevero um and he did a marvelous job i must say directing this film it had the right amount of comedy the right amount of action and the right amount of uh, uh, of horror that you needed in this type of film uh, is not Spielbergian. You know, you don't have the same feeling as when you watch the original, but it's as close as you can get, in my opinion, to the first film. And if you are young, younger than me of course but if you if this is your first experience in the quote unquote Jurassic World Jurassic Park films and this is the first one you saw I think it's a good introduction I think I, I think it's a real good jumping off point because it, it is a fun movie and that's that's what I uh, really want to harp in on these are fun movies at least they're supposed to be they're they're <laughs> popcorn just getting away from the world for two hour movies you know 
enjoy the, the, the action and the adventure and the dinosaurs, how real they look, you know, and, and things of that nature. And, uh, that's all they're there for. It, this is not here for Academy consideration. <laughs> this is, this is, this is clearly a popcorn movie. Uh, all of them. They're considered to be popcorn movies. Uh, summer popcorn adventure movies. So there you have it. Um, this is your first introduction to Chris Pratt, that Bryce Dallas Howard in this new trilogy. And they did a marvelous job. Chris Pratt, uh, at this time, he, he, he was knocking it off the park. He's fresh off of, uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, or oh, did that come first? Did this come? First? No, Guardians of the Galaxy was first. And then this, and he was on the roll. It still is, you could say. Um, Chris Pratt is, uh, you know, he just one of those. He just one of those actors that I, I enjoy watching, and he he fits in this kind of. I don't know. I, 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 he's just under uh, Indiana Jones. If they were going to remake Indiana Jones, which I hope they never do, but if they were to remake it. Chris Pratt would be the perfect Indiana Jones, in my opinion. Um, he has that screen presence to me. He has that charisma to me. And um, he shows it in these films. You know, he can handle the action, definitely can handle the comedy. And I I enjoyed I enjoyed his performance. Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, I enjoyed her. Um, <laughs> I... I you know, she's the daughter of Ron, Ron Howard. I mean, how can you go wrong there? But she, she has carved off a, a, a career path of her own and she is excelling excellently. She also is a real good director, just like her dad. So, uh, yeah, I enjoyed her in this role, even though she outran, uh, a T-Rex in heels, <laughs> which was the silliest part of this whole movie. But it was it was uh it was still entertaining to say the least. Uh uh Jurassic World simply coasts on nostalgia, uh to be honest with you. Ironically, the story itself revolves around the idea that people are tired of dinosaurs. Uh to get the audience of spectators excited again, the designers of the new park start messing with the original formula. The park's director played by Bryce Dallas Howard has to swoop uh, uh, swoop to the demands of her corporate sponsors who only care about profit. Unfortunately Jurassic World commits all the sins that is trying to satire. <laughs> uh, the film introduced a new dinosaur attraction known as the Indomit Indomitus Rex. Unlike the other creations or the other creatures, the Indominus Rex was created specifically for the park. Uh, the Indominus Rex seemingly uh, assumes all power from the script, uh, including camouflaging, uh, blah, camouflaging itself and avoiding heat detection, but then never uses them again. <laughs> Which it, it, it don't. It, it uses these cool little free features, and it never, it never does it again. When, especially in times that they need to use it. Uh, I, I didn't like that. I did not like the Adamus's Adamus's Rex uh, aspect of it because they created this. This is not a real dinosaur that, or a dinosaur that ever d existed. This is something they created um, for the entertainment purposes of the park. And I didn't like it. <laughs> I just did not like because it. The dinosaurs themselves are a, a villainous within their own right. You didn't need to create another dinosaur, you know, and only to have good old T Rex come and save the day, uh, making the T Rex the hero of the story. Uh, I mean, look, <laughs> I, I I didn't like that, but I did enjoy the film. I did enjoy uh, the campiness, the fact that they leaned into it, uh, 
the little backstory, the romance between Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, I, I enjoyed that. They had some great chemistry on screen. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> That's all I can say. It was fun. And Jurassic World gets a ranking of a B. Um, I think it's one of the best. One of the best of the franchise but it's not the best it's top three <laughs> so <laughs> going into our top two our top two are no brainers uh i really don't even know why i ranked them but they <laughs> i guess i'm i did it for uh uh just to be fair and but whatever uh coming in at number two is is the second one and that is the lost world jurassic Park. The Lost World I didn't even know that they were making that movie. Um this was the one film I was was caught off guard by when it was released in 1997. And normally I'm real good at that. I keep up with what's coming out and what you know, what they're making and this that and the third. So I I'm, I'm real good with that. I didn't even know they were making The Lost World. Did not know until it was about to come out. I'm like, wait, they made another one? They made a sequel? Uh, I remember seeing the book in a store. Uh, and they, you know, on the cover it said, you know, the the sequel to Jurassic Park. I'm like, wow, they made, he wrote another book about, <laughs> about that park? Where else could they go? It altered that book, Michael Crichton, by the way. But, uh, yes, it is based on a book. Just like the first one. But The Lost World, Jurassic Park, is a 1997 American science fiction action film. And it's the second installment in the Jurassic Park franchise. In the second film in the Jurassic Park trilogy. Uh, it is the sequel to the 1993 Jurassic Park. And loosely based on Michael Crichton's uh, 1995 novel, The Lost World. The film is directed by Steven Spielberg and directed, I mean, written by David Kep. Uh, Spielberg returns in this sequel. And this is a film that I think Spielberg just said, you know what? <laughs> we're going to make, we're just going to make a crazy dinosaur movie. Uh, he was kind of like dipping his toe in the water with the first one. This one here, he just said, forget it. We're going all out, <laughs> and we're going to do whatever we want to do with this movie. And they did, man. I think this one was a little more gory. Uh, the kills in it were kind of like, man, this PG-13. <laughs> I mean, they, they showed these dinosaurs going ham on people. Uh, but, you know, it's Spielberg. You can get away with that. Uh, Sam Neill, Laura Derm, they didn't return, but you did get the return of the great Jeff uh, Goldblum, who is probably one of the best parts of the original film. Uh, definitely the most entertaining character from the first film. And he led this one, and I think he did an awesome job. The film kind of falls apart at the end for me. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. You know, I, I, I was already on a roller coaster. We was half, you know, halfway through the ride. I can't jump off it. So at this point, <laughs> you just got to hold on tight and wait till you wait till the ride is over. Cause it, it was, it was just some parts that just, well, some parts, the end that kind of just like crumbled. Oh man, we went there, <laughs> you know? We went there, and then the stuff that happens at the end of the film is not even acknowledged in Jurassic Park 3. Actually, it's not acknowledged in any of the films after this, you know? <laughs> and um, Because at the end of this film, we had a, a T-Rex go crazy in San Diego. And <laughs> just, it was like a Godzilla movie or whatever. And I'm like, oh my goodness, where are we going with this? Which they end up repeating in 
these upcoming in the Jurassic World films. But it, you know, not the same. But it, it, it was fun. Like I said, it was it was just fun. You know, just to enjoy for enjoyment's sake. But uh, Jeff Goldblum did a good job. I, I, the daughter aspect of it, having a daughter come along, uh, played by Vanessa Lee uh, Chester. That was kind of silly. I guess they felt they had to have a kid in these movies to make it kid friendly, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know the reason why. Because you didn't need her in this movie. <laughs> it really didn't. I mean, she had some interesting uh, uh, scenes, but nothing that I was like, oh, yeah, boy, she she was there to save the day. I don't know. It, it Look. Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, in the in the first film... Uh, Dr. Grant uh, gets over his dislike of children uh, as he watches over Tim, the Tim character in Lex. Uh, Malcolm is forced to learn the same lessons when he is, when his daughter sneaks on to the mission. Uh, Malcolm fa- faces questions about his future. Uh, can he be a father and boyfriend that uh, Kelly and Sarah deserves? His journey from playful comic relief to hero is a complete uh, compelling character arc Goldblum's understanding performance is not given enough credit and I I couldn't agree with it more uh it really he plays a tortured soul here in this film he, he you could tell that uh he's been put through the ringer ever since uh the events that happened in the first film and he really displays this vulnerability and you know everybody is kind of suffering from it every everybody in his life is suffering from it you know because he can't let go of what took place on that island and um i guess you could call ptsd you know but when his girlfriend who was portrayed in this film by julianne moore um is on the island and he feels he has to go and rescue her even though she didn't ask <laughs> um it's 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 like a i don't know it, it it's it, he turned into this hero character and it was earned you know it wasn't just a a shift in character from movies but it was earned you felt what took place in between those two movies through Jeff Goldblum's performance and I really appreciated that like I said the only thing I didn't like about this movie was the end uh it just did not work for me even though it was exciting to see a dinosaur running through the United States like you know (laughs) running through buildings drinking out of swimming pools and eating dogs in backyards yeah all that was fun but it was it just didn't fit the movie I felt but Whatever the case may be, Jur- uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park gets a grade of a B plus. Uh, so that leads us to number one. Well, hmm, hmm, I wonder what number one could be. Wow, oh man, so many choices, so many choices. Duh. Well, you all know, coming in at number one is of course the original, the one. That started it all, Jurassic Park, made in 1993. My God, people, my God, this is a classic film. Um, this movie, honestly, I sit back and I'm so disturbed by it because there are so many flaws, so many errors in this movie that I noticed the first time I watched it, mind you. And I did not care. And here we are. Here we are. Almost 40 years later. (laughs) Well, 30 years. How long has been? Yeah, about 30 years later. I'm still not caring about all the flaws I saw. Let me give you the biggest one. The one that it does trouble me, but I don't care. You know, you just go along with it in the movie. In the scene, and if you've seen the movie, y'all know what I'm talking about. In the scene when we first see the T-Rex, okay? 
when they attack when the T Rex attacks them on that road where they had broken down or the the, the automatic cars shut down at by the fence. And it is an awesome scene. It is one of the most incredible scenes in film. I mean the adrenaline that pumps through your veins when you witness in this. Well, before I get into that, and I'm, I'm going to get into that. I'm not going to forget. But I had mentioned earlier about the CG and using practical and stuff like that. This film used practical. Actually, a lot of the, the Jurassic Park films did use practical effects. Uh, these puppets, um, these giant puppet dinosaurs. Um, the T-Rex in this particular scene that I'm about to go into when we first meet the T-Rex isn't real is a real puppet T-Rex this is a real deal and it looks so amazing the 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 effects are done by the, the late great Stan Winston and those dinosaurs look so amazing and this T-Rex in this scene looks so amazing with the rain and oh my goodness but anyways getting back into it um the t-rex noticed that the power is out when it hits the fence and the fence is not electrified anymore so it comes through the fence it just steps through the fence all right that's cool right that, that, nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that attacks them flips over the the uh 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 trucks and all this other stuff and eats a lawyer sitting on the toilet you know <laughs> you know the good life it was doing all this and sam neil and the two kids they decide the only way to get away from it they had to go into the forest into the other on the other side of the fence so they climb down the wall and i mean climb down the wall how did the t-rex step just step clean over the fence but when Sam Neil them and the kids and, and climb down this wall it's like a big old levee <laughs> I mean it's huge it, it, they in this I mean it's big old trees there even the car gets stuck in stuck in the tree when the T-Rex pushes the car over it that's how far down this goes and that just <laughs> blew my mind when I watched it I'm like this logically does not make a lick of sense in any other movie with any other director I probably would have grabbed my popcorn stood up and went home but the scene was so amazing I did not care and <laughs> That is part of the reason why I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. Uh, the other one was uh, that I found ridiculous when Samuel L. Jackson character. Yes, Samuel L. Jackson is in this movie. Uh, he gets eaten, but whatever. <laughs> when Laura Dern character goes to the, to the little electrical booth thing to turn the power back on. And um, Samuel L. Jackson arm just falls over her shoulder and she's like oh thank god you're alive as you turn around and see that the arm is detached the body's gone so you mean to tell me the raptors just left that arm there as a scare as a jump scare <laughs> it was just it was just dumb it, it was so dumb but it it, it worked <laughs> it worked i didn't care it, i did not care um Look, I can, I can spend all day pointing out the stupid stuff that was in this movie, but I enjoyed every single one, and it knew it, it knew it was. As I said before, it had camp, and it leaned into it. I, when I say leaned into it, it jumped. It took both feet off the ground and jumped clean into the camp, and it was glorious. It was movie goodness, man. Oh, it was so excellent. Steven Spielberg, a uh, little backstory on this. He d he agreed to do this film on one condition. If the studio will allow him to make Schindler's List. Uh, he, he had been trying to get Schindler's List made for decades. And for some strange reason, 
the studios would not allow him to make this movie or wouldn't finance him or back him uh, for the film. So, um, finally, the studio was begging him to do Jurassic Park, and he didn't want to do it. He honestly did not want to make Jurassic Park. And um, finally, a bub went off in his head. So he said, all right, Universal, if you want me to make Jurassic Park, I'll do it. But I'll do it if you back Schindler's List. They agreed. So if it wasn't for Jurassic Park, we wouldn't have got the, the historical classic from Steven Spielberg. Schindler's List. So we have a lot to be thankful for <laughs> with this movie. Um, for that alone, it gets a high grade. But yes, that's 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 how Schindler's List got made. Otherwise, they never would have made that movie. I don't know why. I <laughs> honestly don't know why. Nobody wanted to make that movie. I guess because of the dark tones to it or whatever. Nobody wanted to rehash history, but. As history has taught us, history unlearned is history repeated. So that that was a, in a, a very important film that needed to be made and watched. And uh, I think I'm a better person for watching that movie. So, but anyways, back to Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, it is a classic. Honestly, it is a cinematic classic. The performances are top notch. The special effects are top notch. The, the, I mean, the the puppet work is top notch, man. And John Williams' score is still one of the best scores ever. Of course, it's John Williams. That, that's what he do. Uh, yes, Jurassic Park, the original from 1993, gets an A plus. And I know, I, I just listed. 30 different reasons <laughs> why it shouldn't get an A plus, but I love every single frame of this movie that I absolutely love it. It, it has not faded. It, it still holds up to this day. It holds up better than some of the later editions. Definitely holds up better than Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That's <laughs> so just going to put that out there, but it is, it is a great film. Loved it. And we are going to get the conclusion this weekend with Jurassic World Dominion. Um, and that's my list. That's that's the list. That is the movie goodness list of the best to worst Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World films. Coming in at number one, Jurassic Park. Coming in at number two. The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Coming in at number three, Jurassic World. Coming in at number four, Jurassic Park 3. And coming in at number five, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The only question remains, what will or where will um, Jurassic World Dominion fall in this ranking? Um, Judging by some of the early reviews that has been coming out, in the past week from critics not looking good <laughs> it's not is not looking too hot um <laughs> but look i i know i review films criticize films recommend films but at the end of the day it's up to you to watch the movie um films are subjective i just give my opinion about a film you go see it for yourself. Even if I give a film an F, see it for yourself. Maybe you might like it. Like Kevin, what what were you looking at? How you missed this? Or I give it an A plus, and you give it an F. Like and then you come back, Kevin. What were you looking? At? <laughs> you know, it's all subjective. It, that, that's fine. Everybody has, has the right to have their own opinion. Everything doesn't work for everybody. Uh, so when critics give their reviews and stuff like that. I like to get my own view of it. So just because the critics are demolishing this movie, um, <laughs> I'm still going to go see it and give my own opinion. And, you know, uh, and same thing here. If, if you're listening and I give a review, 
and I tell you, I completely hate a movie. I still, cause I still recommend you go see it, cause I could be wrong. Not too often that I am, but I could be wrong, you know. And so, uh, I'm gonna go watch it this weekend. Hopefully, it lands high. Uh, honestly, I don't have a lot of faith in it. Uh, but you know, look, if anything. We have return the returning characters. We have Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum returning in this film, as well as Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. So uh Howard, what was I saying? So they're all the Avengers of Jurassic Park movies. <laughs> so you know, Avengers assemble to take on these uh uh dinosaurs. So hey, look, man, I We'll see whether they drop the ball or not. But which which one is your favorite Jurassic Jurassic Park Jurassic World movie? Let me know by emailing us kbradiopodcast at gmail dot com. You also let us know on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or YouTube. Let us know which one which one is your favorite of the franchise. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, don't forget to leave those five star ratings and reviews uh it helps the show out tremendously if you're listening on other listening platforms you can also share the show recommend the show to all your friends and family let everybody know that you're listening to the kb radio network everybody has been an honor privilege and joy to speak with you today about uh dinosaurs uh <laughs> I, I hey man look it's weird to be a fan of this franchise because honestly it's only one real great film in this franchise. All the rest of eh, all right, you know, <laughs> but the fact that he got six movies out of this is amazing, which shouldn't be amazing. Cause they made how many Friday the 13th have they made? How many, uh, <laughs> final destinations have they made? Uh, Harry Potter movies have they made? But I know that's a big thing. A lot of people love Harry Potter. I've never, after the third one, I kind of checked out. Um, and I'm talking about the original ones. And I ain't seen not, none of the Fantastic Beasts. Uh, but that's a whole nother thing. But anyways, everybody, if you're going to check out Jurassic World Dominion this weekend, enjoy. Hope you enjoy the movie. I hope I enjoy the movie. And uh, after I watch the movie, stay tuned for a review of Jurassic World Dominion, which will be dropping either this Sunday or this Monday. I don't remember which one, but it'll be dropping soon. So be on the lookout for it. Everyone wants you all to know, love you, continue to love one another. And until we speak again, you all be blessed.